Hello and welcome to another video. So this will be the last of the trig ratios that I said I was going to um, show you the derivatives from first principles. So this is going to be the derivative of cotangent x from first principles. And what we're saying is that um, we want to find the derivative. We know the answer is supposed to be negative cosecant squared x. Okay, but you don't want to use the memorized version. You want to show it that that's true using the definition of the derivative, which is this. Okay, that the derivative of any function must be given as the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So firstly, what is cotangent? What does it mean? Well, it's the ratio of cosine to sine. And that's the definition we're going to use now for this derivative. So let's just go ahead and start. Okay, by the way, make remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And if you need private tutoring, just get in touch with me. Send me an email at primemutants at gmail.com. And I'll get in touch with you. If you live in, live in Los Angeles, then we might get a chance to do a one-on-one. -on -one. If you don't live in Los Angeles, well, it has to be remote on Zoom. Okay, let's get back to this. So, the definition using it, we're going to say that um, f prime of x has to be equal to the function of x plus h. Well, this function will we'll now write this way. We can't use this because we don't know so much about cotangent, but we can relate with cosine and sine. So remember, that's a trick you want to always employ. If you don't know what to do with cotangent, convert it to something in terms of sine and cosine. So this is going to be the cosine of x plus h. Oh, sorry, we've got to take the limit. So this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of the cosine of x plus h over the sine of x plus h because that's the meaning of cotangent of x plus h minus the cosine of x over the sine of x all divided by h okay that's basically what we're looking for and uh, this should be in the middle here okay but i hope you get that in order to not write um double lines i'm just going to write it this way so we say f prime of x will be equal to let's say uh, i'm going to put the limit here as h goes to zero and i'll write one over h on this side so i don't have to write this double line okay one over h times now what do i do to get rid of uh, a fraction so this is called a complex fraction so the trick that i've repeated in other videos is whenever you have a fraction within a fraction you want to multiply the top and bottom by the two denominators that you've got here. So we're going to multiply by the two denominators, which are sine x and sine x plus h. And in that case, what you have will be, um, if I multiply, let, let me write it out. So this is going to be um, cosine. Yeah, this is crazy. I wish I didn't have to write this out, but I have to write it out. Or I can as well just make this into a single fraction since I have already put this h out here. So I can make this into a single fraction. You know how you do it? In your mind, you do it as if it's a cross multiplication, like this and like this, and then you divide by the same term, and we might have to factor out eventually, or maybe not, okay? Um, but this is gonna be a little complicated. But I'm gonna make this into a single fraction, okay? So collect like, so it's gonna be sine x, cosine x plus h. So this is sine x, sine x cosine x plus h okay minus cosine x cosine x sine x plus h all divided by the product of this two which is going to be sine x sine x plus h okay I think this this went smoother than I was expecting Okay, now, what does the top look like? If you remember your trig identities, whenever you have sine A minus B, you will write it as sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. And in what we have on top, remember what's on top is always the problem. Don't touch what's under. It never gives you any problem. The top is what you need to simplify. So now, what I have is uh, it looks like my a is x and my b is x plus h look 
it fits perfectly into what we have on top. This is x, this is x plus h, this is x, this is x plus h. It fits perfectly. So this is a minus b. So I can replace this long expression with just sign a minus b. And what is a minus b? It's going to be x minus x plus h, which is going to be um, x minus x minus h. So these two take each other out, and I have negative h. So I can write the expression as just sign negative h. But remember, okay, let's write that out yet. <laughs> this is exciting because sine negative h, because sine is an odd function, sine, so this expression here, which I could have written as sine, um, x minus x plus h, okay, which would replace that entire expression, could, when simplified, will become just sine negative h. I just showed you the simplification of this. But sine negative h is the same thing as negative sine h, because h is a is an odd function, okay? So the negative of the argument, you can move it outside and then you get a negative function, okay? So I can replace everything on top just by this. This is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of negative sine h. That's what this top part is divided by, now I'm bringing back my h because I want to do something nice. h times sine x, sine x plus h. Remember I told you the bottom is never the problem. And what can we do here? Well, I know that if I put this h under this expression because I know that the limit, so this is something to recall again, okay? Maybe I should have written it here. Uh, another recall, let's, let's squeeze it in here. Okay, recall that the limit as h goes to zero, or let's say x, or theta, okay, of sine theta over theta is always equal to one. This is something you already know, okay? So, yeah, that's Los Angeles. Well, it's a fire truck. Okay, and here we go. If you have this expression, it's gonna be the limit as h goes to zero of negative sine h. And this negative is not relevant. You can move it to the back, okay, over h, okay, times. You can take another limit because this is a continuous function and this expression to is continuous limit as h goes to zero of one over, this is gonna be sine x times sine x plus h, okay. If we take this limit, it's going to be negative 1. Okay, this is going to be 1, so we put the negative multiplied by, well, as h goes to 0, this is going to go to 0, so it's 1 over sine x times sine x. So that's 1 over sine x times sine x. And what does that tell you? It's negative. Remember 1 over sine? So it's 1 over negative 1 over sine squared x, which is equal to negative cosecant squared x. And that's the derivative from first principles or using the definition of the derivative. I hope that was helpful. If it was, give it a like, give it a share, leave a comment, a good comment in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning have simply stopped living. Bye-bye.